welcome. In this video I want to talk to you about painting with greater confidence. I'll talk you through how I painted this and I'll give you lots of tips and ideas for how to be more confident when you're painting as I go and I'll see you at the end. Standing up is a great place to start. Um, if you make sure that you are comfortable and you feel um, happy and secure and you stand with a confident pose to paint, uh, that's one easy step that will help get you started. I've taken my shoes and socks off today, so I'm stood here barefoot, you can trust me on that. And also to stand well, to, to loosen tension in shoulders, to feel expansive with your body, to feel that you can move freely uh, is, an, is a way of removing inhibition and maybe helping, helping our minds to open up and to feel a little more relaxed and a little happier in our bodies before we start painting. So make sure you feel well grounded through your legs, a good stance, and that you're moving freely, that you expand into the space you're in um, with your body, and you stand tall with your head up and your chin raised and your shoulders down and relaxed. And it's a good idea to say, take a few deep breaths as well. Um, really fill your lungs in and exhale and let tension and problems just move away a little bit and give your head some space to be creative. One of the first things you need to do when you're setting up to paint, uh, if you want to paint freely, you need to make sure that you are not inhibited by the space that you're in or fear of making a mess. I always wear an apron and I always wear old clothes for painting in so I don't have to worry about if I have an accident with a uh, stray paintbrush and, and also you might want to cover the floor under your easel as well. Um, the first thing you'll note is that I'm stood up today and that's so that I can step back from the easel. I want this painting to be a very free and confident painting and I want it to look good from a few feet back because that's how we see paintings when they're on the wall. So I've got a little pot here, a little um, geranium set up to paint. I've set up uh, the light so that it makes the paint the subject look more um, appealing and that's another thing make sure you do love your subject because there's nothing worse than painting something that doesn't inspire you and it needs to be something that that fills you with enthusiasm don't accept anything less so I've got my subject set up I've got space to step back I've got my work set up vertically uh, it's also set up at a height where I can look at it straight ahead I'm not stooping and I can see the subject easily, so I can then transfer that onto paint here. I've put out a lot of paint here um, so that I don't have to keep stopping and topping up my, um, my paint blobs here. Um, the other reason that's good is because it means that I can put the paint on more liberally uh, and it won't dry out as quickly either. This is just on a cheap plastic tray here. And I'm going to start the painting with a one inch, I think it's a one inch brush, wide brush. Uh, and I really just want to get some big shapes on here to help me um, see the composition that I'm going to be working with. This is some watercolour paper that I've primed with pale umber acrylic paint. It makes quite a nice surface to work on. And I'm just mixing. I've got three primaries here. Um, I think that's a light cadmium yellow, alizarin crimson and um, French ultramarine blue. And I'm mixing them together here to make a kind of what I want is a kind of neutral greyish brown. I'm going to stand well back. Uh, I want my arm to be able to move quite freely as I'm painting. So if I stand well back and I'm probably at least three, maybe four feet away from this board now. And I've got a long handled brush, which I'm going to hold at the far end of the handle to give me lots of free movement. Let's see how far we get um, in about three quarters of an hour. Um, you don't have to do every painting quickly, but working fairly quickly will help because of the changing light in the room. But also it stops you getting too fiddly as well. And if you're trying to build your confidence, you may be surprised at just how much you can achieve in that time. I'm squinting at this shape and I think really that pot is one of the most dominant parts of this because it's dark. It's a dark um, ellipse. Sorry, loosen my grip. What you'll find if you become really 
Let's put some white in here. The, I've got a lot of titanium white out and it does help the paint to flow quite in a good way. So squinting away and I'm just going to put on, this is, um, I've added some blue to that mix. And I'm just using the same brush and I'm just looking at the negative shapes in this. Uh, where the shadows are, where the big shapes are. And not thinking about detail in any way, just putting paint on. What you'll find very often, um, and I, I think everybody does this to a degree, I think it's not uncommon, is that you may find you've got habits when you paint, a bit like your handwriting, and that we tend to revert to those habits, particularly if we're struggling with the painting, our default methods will kick in when we're struggling. And we end up painting in the same way that we always have. So we revert to these uh, familiar methods and then become frustrated because we're not achieving the results that we want. And, and very often uh, students tell me that they want their work to look more confident, to be a bit looser, a bit more abstract, you know, and it, it's not that easy to get there when we have learned habits um, that kind of hold us back. And if you do things like changing the way that you work, maybe standing up if you're used to sitting down, um, maybe working to a different size, going large or going small, or using a much bigger brush than you're normally comfortable with, that kind of thing can really help to force you out of habits, out of your habitual behaviour. I've got some slow drying medium here um, that will help with the flow. Um, trying to keep water out of this. So I'm kind of being generous with the paint and uh, using you know, firm, very firm brush marks to kind of block this in. Uh, and this is kind of white because it does get lighter down here. And then the plant itself and keep using this same brush because I quite like the relaxedness of this that I just put fresh paint on it and away we go. Um, it's like a green for those leaves. And then that comes up. I've got some of that dark. And I'm using the tip of this flat brush to give some thinner marks. And then there's pink. I just dry that brush off. I don't need to rinse it. I'm trying to keep water out of the paint. And I'll just put these in because what's lovely about working like this is, and particularly with acrylics, it's very easy to return to these areas and adapt them. So if I get paint on here and then decide I need to change it later on, I could just go over the top. It's such a good, forgiving medium. Oils are good too. You can wipe them off and you know you can make changes that way. But I think acrylics perhaps are the most malleable and forgiving of mediums. And I always feel they look better for being worked more as well. You know, the more you build them up. Uh, the better they look. So there's all kinds of textured stuff down here. So I'm really just placing things. I'm not really worrying about anything at the moment, just getting stuff on here that I can work with. I've got this kind of warm colour on my brush. I'm going to mix that. I'm stirring that into some titanium white here because there's some very nice uh, pale warm oops, colours that on. The big thing uh, 
with this to not worry too much about them. But so you can go back over things. And so I don't know if you noticed that, but that kind of squished a bit too much. It went out of the shape of the pot. So I've just put a bit more background around it and it's okay. Um, okay. So at this point, I've got a kind of sketch. This is a, a beginning sketch and it's now 10 minutes in. Um, so now I can just keep working with this to kind of reaffirm what's working and to develop the bits that need developing. It's important, I think this applies to everything really, but it's really important when you're painting to, um, to be conscious of your thoughts as you paint. Um, especially if you are quite a self-critical person. Uh, it's very easy when you're painting to have a negative voice in your head, uh, especially when things are going wrong. There's a kind of unhelpful negative voice that wants to chip in and make you feel even more insecure about what you're doing. And if you're just conscious of that, that there is this nagging voice of doubt in the back of your mind and if that little voice sort of crops up particularly when the painting has just started and you, you start sort of full of hope I'm not saying I feel like that now because I'm really quite liking this but you can get to this point you know where you've started a painting and you're full of optimism full of hope for it and you get to a point where there's some paint on but you haven't really started to make the painting come to life yet you know there isn't enough paint on to see what it is that you're trying to describe in whatever that may be and that little nagging voice of doubt about whether you're going to succeed or not will just kind of crop up really unhelpfully at times like that and very often Partly I speak, I speak from personal experience, but also from having had countless conversations with students going through that. And it's simply a case of persevering, getting more paint on, moving through that time of doubt, putting more time and thought into the painting rather than our concerns, and giving it a good chance. And gradually, you know, with thought and patience, um, you can pull the painting through that uh, awkward middle bit and start to make it work. But it takes a certain amount of paint. You need a, a kind of, there's a, a kind of critical mass of paint that you need to get onto the surface so that you see there's enough paint to see the colours and tones affecting each other and helping each other and working together so that, you know, these dark shadows look right against these light tones and, and all of that. And you can't do that. You can't. There's no shortcut to getting to that point. You have to put the paint on uh, in order to see it all working together. So patience and knowing that, just being aware of that will help you at that point. Uh, when it starts to get a little bit tricky or seem difficult, you know, too difficult to manage, maybe. Uh, so I am putting on some light. There's a lot of daylight falling through onto here. It's still too purple. You sometimes you just need to put the paint on, have a look at it. Um, the other thing, obviously, if you practice painting and drawing a lot every day, if you can, um, particularly the drawing and the observation, you will gain skills that will then obviously make you feel more confident about your abilities. And while everybody has good and bad days, no matter how much experience they've got, uh, 
it certainly helps if you know you've got that skill set um, that you've learned a certain amount and that will help you to to carry through even when things are a bit uh, tricky and you're not feeling so confident those skills don't go anywhere they're always there and it's just a case of persevering until you you get them back uh, and it's very, very likely that there will be periods when you are feeling less confident because everybody is always trying to learn more. And if you don't take chances and risks with your work, it's very unlikely that you'll ever move forward. We're only learning when it's difficult, otherwise we're just going through the motions. So. You know, if you're going to try and move your skills forward and expand what you can do, um, then there's, you know, an element of failure or risk with that. And it's all just part of being an artist, being a painter. Um, I would say to my students, if it was easy, it wouldn't be worth doing. And it's overcoming those difficulties that, you know, is all part of making it interesting it makes it interesting the other thing I would advise another tip would be when you have done a piece of work that you're happy with uh, that you put it on the wall and you enjoy it as a work of art on your wall either in your workspace like I do I've got things all over the walls in here uh, or in your home you know in your living space because it it carries you along so even when you're having a bad day you're just, well, okay this isn't so good today but that one was great <laughs> and that helps you know in your, your low times to kind of help encourage you um i'm really sorry I'm, I'm kind of dabbling away here but i'm really enjoying putting this color on around the marks that i put in in the first place so i'm kind of picking them out but it's giving this kind of wrinkly uh, broken up effect of the dried up geranium petals there, which I quite like. Um, like I say, all of it, I, I think acrylics do look better when they're layered, they become more subtle. Um, so all of it can be worked over as I go, but I'm just trying to get paint you know, all over the painting at the moment, all over this surface. Uh, there are shadows here which are a little bit warmer than the colour of the cloth. The scarf there is a very soft blue, but the shadows are a different colour. I'm just holding the brush up to the arrangement to have a look at if I can get the right kind of colour for that shadow, and I think that is. And that's quite a broad, there we go, broad shape down here and that also comes across here because of the this is the shadow of the flower heads there. and there's a shadow this is the shadow of the cloth that goes down there so I've started really broad as you can see I've started with very generous very free marks and then as I feel more confident about what I've got here, I will start to make more considered marks. So start loose and broad, just thinking about very general tones and shapes. And now I'm starting to think about the more nuanced parts of this, like this very pretty feathery shadow going across here. I've got an electric light shining on the flowers from the top left that's casting a good shadow, very varied shadow over here. And that was really what I liked about this uh, subject. So there's all sorts going on. I'm still using the same brush, one brush. I'm just mixing up a 
slightly warmer pale tone with the gaps in between the shadows. This is one of those moments where uh, I like that I'm not painting the shadows onto a background colour or that I'm not painting the plant onto the background colours. I'm doing them all at the same time and uh, it has so many benefits. Um, partly I can constantly adjust, move that slightly warmer, adjust what I'm doing. So if anything isn't drawn quite correctly or needs moving, I can do that. The whole thing is quite open, um, unfixed at this point. And uh, so it's quite easy to make changes to it um, if necessary. I'm just looking at how this all works. So, so I'm painting the light patches between the shadows because they've got a bit blue. I'm putting in a kind of paler, creamy white in between. Uh, and it's it's kind of, this feels more natural to me. This is, you know, I paint the sky between trees as well. It's, um, there's something, I like the edges that you get when you do this, um, that you get this kind of layered, soft edge that's gone a bit green um, and it's all just so much more interesting than a flat background and flat neat shadows um, it's also good if you can be quite generous with your paint you know, really do put it on um, freely because you get much better quality of colour doing that. Uh, and, you know, keep water out of it too because that makes it go thin and matte. Um, just seeing where the light falls over here. Um, but also, it makes the work look more confident too. If you're kind of fearless with your paint, just go for it. Um, there's a wonderful phrase a student taught me years ago, um, fake it till you make it. Act confidently. Uh, and very often good things will happen that build your confidence. And um, it's a good rule for life really, but uh, if, you get results if you get good results it makes you it's like an upward spiral it makes you work better um, because you feel more confident about working in a bolder more generous more free way that's probably a bit dark there so i'm going to lighten that yes so this shadow too light And also, if you keep in mind that everything that you do is speculative, that you're just trying things out and seeing what works, that's also very liberating because you don't feel that you're kind of stuck with anything. Um, you know, you're just trying and see what seeing what works and sometimes something will work for a while and then it doesn't work anymore so you kind of you know because you put more paint on so you then change that and you know do something else build it up in a different direction so you're constantly kind of responding to what's going on on the painting so that pot had also become very dark there's very little difference. It's a white pot on a white cloth. So there's very little difference between this pot and the shadow on the cloth behind. I can let that little bit of dark purple there just describe that edge. Okay, and then put a little bit more white in it as it comes around because there is more light on the left hand side.
with this flat, this large flat brush is really doing a good job for me. And this is the scarf in shadow there. I've actually got that ellipse a little bit flat. Uh, so I'm just going to build that up a little bit. And this is where I get a different brush because I've got a round brush there because I need something to kind of get that circular patch of compost in there. So I'm mixing for fresh dark colour. So, you know, we, could, we come across problems in a painting and they're there to be solved. So with this kind of paint, you can do that fairly straightforwardly. It's not quite red enough. I just need a bit of blue. It's only having that too. And so I need to just open the top of that pot up a little bit. What's nice is I can see the green leaves of the compost, which is quite good. And I need some blue on the inside of this pot there. Some white there. And then I'll put some use this for light on the front as well. It's a very shiny part there. Another voice that can kick in when you're painting, which is really unhelpful, is the one that tells you that, you know, it's um, geraniums don't look like that, that kind of voice. And it's just so silly. It's um, very unhelpful because we're not painting things simply to copy nature. We're creating a painting primarily. And whether it looks like somebody else's idea of what a geranium looks like, or whether it resembles our idea of what we saw on that day or that moment, that's all up for grabs, you know, that's all debatable. And it all comes down to questions of taste and style. And I think if you can start a painting with a good, clear idea of what you're after before you really get invested in it, that will help you to deal with that question. Or, you know, as you're painting, if you hear that little voice pop up, and you may even imagine, you know, an old school teacher or somebody who's, you know, had an influence on you at some time and their critical voice uh, wondering whether your painting really looks like the thing that you were looking at or that sort of thing. I had excellent school teachers, I'm, I was fine, but I know so many people, I've met so many people who were criticised, who were given very negative criticism as children or at school and it stays with them. Uh, for a long, long time. And we hear negative comments so much more loudly than positive ones. Uh, so if you hear that kind of voice cropping up in your imagination as you're painting, just quietly tell it that you're not listening to that <laughs> and you have your own objective here. Uh, as long as you're true to that, you'll be fine. Um, well, I've mixed up some blue, but I'm not sure how much blue I really need here. Let's step back and have a look at this, because I've got closer and closer to it, and I'm aware of that. Uh, I'm liking this very much. I like the composition. I like the way the plant is leaning into the space. That isn't really doing anything at all there. So I can have this creative conversation with myself without it being critical. So it's, I'm saying I can do that better. I'm not saying this isn't good enough or I can't paint anymore or, you know, <laughs> there's a way of being self-critical that isn't self-sabotaging. So I know that that part there, that white pale area there, isn't really doing anything for the painting at the moment. 
it's sort of jumping out and you know when I step back that's what I can see it jumps out of the painting and it's far too dominant because it's creating a high contrast with the colours next to it and the tones next to it. So I'm looking at the subject again and it's a very smoky soft blue in there so I'll mix up a few different versions of the blue and um, just make that kind of sit in with the rest of it in a helpful way. It's all kind of folds and creases this. I've expanded it a little bit because it's actually quite a narrow strip of blue but I think, you know, so this part I've kind of uh, exaggerated slightly but that's my prerogative because it's my painting and um, I'm not just concerned with the appearance of this subject that's too bright. It's also about what works for my painting and what doesn't. I mean the other option would be, and it's worth considering, would be putting more white in here because the other board is there. There's a bit more board, sorry, showing here. Uh, but I don't want to I want it to be blue. And then we're going to make a bit more of the dark kind of blue, I think. Ooh. Actually quite purple. So you can see you can really just put the paint on like that. You know, completely wrong. Not but it's not an issue because I can just change it. Go over it and change it, and that's fine. Of course the the style of painting. What I'm doing here is a particularly kind of loose, impressionistic kind of style of painting. And you may have desires to do something more academic, um, like the sort of traditional atelier style painting. Uh, in which case, you know, that's the kind of class that you'll need to look for. Um, so, you know, that's, that's a question of taste and your ambitions, your personal ambitions. Uh, so there aren't really rights and wrongs with this, but it's finding the course or the YouTube videos or um, the art school that suits what you're trying to achieve, what your goals are. And that's very personal, obviously. Can I just get that a bit darker in there to create some of the deeper folds and creases? And it also gives a bit of a contrast to the flowers. I'm going to put some of the slow drying medium in that too, so I can draw that down. I do like the textures you get with acrylics. It's sort of slightly uh, more rough than oils. Oils are very kind of creamy and they flow well, but with acrylics you get this whole other range of drier textures which you know, they have a, an appeal of their own. Okay, I saw it. Have a look at that now. That's better. That's kind of, this is a bit solid. Break that up a little bit. And now I'm just going to tuck a little bit more of that around those flowers. I want to get the, the flowers just a bit more lively. A bit more richly painted because I've spent a lot of time now on the background but I feel like I've set the scene for this now. So I'm going to make up some pink again so I've got the alizarin and the titanium white here for this very soft pink. Um, so I'm sure I've got plenty of it too. Um, Another tip regarding how to build your self-confidence as a painter is to not compare yourself to other artists, to not have a kind of mental league table of uh, painters that you admire to compare yourself to. Um, the only person you really need to compare yourself to is your previous self. So you're on a, a personal journey personal developmental journey regarding your skills 
and that seeing progress in that respect is far more important and far more useful than comparing yourself harshly to other painters. Um, and if you do research into art history, it can be quite helpful if you read letters by um, you know, the well-known famous painters. You'll often see them talking of struggle. Um, I know there are letters by Matisse to Picasso or Bonnard and Matisse, um, you know, where they discuss the difficulties of what it is that they're trying to do. And I think for anybody trying to be really good at something, as they were, uh, there will be a struggle because they're pushing themselves hard to do something new uh, and to do something that they haven't done before. So everybody has their own goals and you can have your own. Uh, and you can even write them down, you know, and, and tick them off, sort of achievable aims. Uh, and um, only compare your success to your success a year ago or you know, 10 years ago. Um, and hopefully, you should gain confidence from doing that. Um, that's why you should never throw work away as well, um, I always think, because when you look back, it's quite interesting really, when you look back, either you see how much you've improved, or you look back and you think, oh actually that was better than I thought. Sometimes people, when we judge our work, uh, we're judging our work against our expectations when we set out to create the painting. So, you know, an hour ago I had this painting in mind, um, hoping that it would turn out a certain way, you know, and that it will either do that, it may turn out to be something a bit different, or it may not be like it at all and I might be disappointed. But in a year's time, I would have forgotten what that goal was. And... I will judge it just like anybody else would uh, for its own merits and probably judge it much more fairly. I'm now going into fine detail actually, or just a little bit more thought and care with these leaves. And um, yes, see it for its merits, for its worth, not see it in regard to whether it fell short of or how far it fell short of my aims when I was starting out. Just resting my little finger on the paper there so I can just suggest how these stalks go. If you hesitate when you're doing something like this, uh, it's much more likely to wobble. The line will wobble or splodge or something. And I hold my breath when I'm doing this too. Be careful if you're doing that, but it certainly helps to get a steadier line. To do the leaves, I think, and then I'll go back to that um, uh, background there. One thing, just realising how I'm phrasing that, one thing that can really help when you're painting in this way is to not think of the painting in terms of the subject and the background. Um, if you can regard everything as equally relevant, equally important, uh, and simply as shapes, it makes the drawing and the assessing of tones and shape and relationships across the painting. It makes all of that much easier if you think in terms of shapes, not things. It's a good mantra. So this is just a green shape. This is a dark green shape going in. 
I've also, because I underpainted this in uh, pale umber acrylic, it leaves any gaps left between the paint marks, the brush marks, just look like more paint. So there's tiny amounts, but there may be a little bit through there that uh, I can see. And it doesn't matter, it, rather than a white gap. You know, white gaps look like unfinished painting. But, so I'm correcting as I go. I'm sort of moving over the painting from one area to another. And it's quite warm, that colour. It's interesting. Let me start kind of wide. Um, and I'm just assessing whether I've got things right as I develop it. It's also very important, really helpful if you can enjoy the journey when you're a painter. Don't get too caught up with that critical kind of discourse in your head because it can take all the joy out of the experience. <laughs> um, but if you can just enjoy, you know, in a very childlike way, almost splodging around with colour, uh, creating illusions, you know, this is what I enjoy, is just finding out what I can do with the paint. Um, what effects I can create. If you are more process than product focused, so you think more about what's going on in the here and now than what you're turning out, uh, it helps to alleviate the pressure on you. And there's a lot going on here, but hoping I can just give an impression of it, not slavishly copying what's there, but I hope at some level the idea that this is the shadow of the plant will carry through. Because I like how that that's an echo of this. Friends, if you try any of the ideas that I've suggested today, that your tendency, your natural tendency will be to revert to your normal habits. So you may try doing these things and you may succeed with the first attempt, but then immediately go back to your normal way of painting for the next one. So <laughs> if you really want to get to grips with painting in a slightly different way to usual, you need to be conscious of that natural habit that will always try to pull you back into what's familiar and you don't move on. What you can do is make a few notes that you can pin on your studio wall or your workspace wall um, with a few useful phrases in. Uh, you may find doing things like just taking your shoes off to work is enough to kind of remind you, that kind of constant reminder that you're doing things differently. Uh, that might work. Um, always working on an easel might help. So you're working upright and more likely to stand or to, if you do sit down to work, you know, have your, your table and your chair uh, well spaced out, you know, so you can push the work away on your table and see it from a distance. You know, any just make sure you do that, move away a little bit from time to time and uh, check what you're doing from a distance. Um, another thing I was going to say, um, you can set the mood for a different kind of painting by playing music as you work, which I often do. Um, and depending on the mood you need to create, if you're feeling highly strong and distracted and maybe anxious, you might want to play very calming music. 
I listen to every genre of music depending on what I need to hear, you know, at the time. So Miles Davis is good. Um, and uh, Oscar Peterson or... If, on the other hand, if you need invigorating and you need something to kind of wake you up because you're kind of feeling sluggish or heavy or slow and you need a, a good jolt to kind of get you going and get you feeling lively and energetic, then, you know, punk rock or Beethoven or, you know, a bit of uh, really uh, wake up music will change your mood. It it I mean, this is why we love music. It changes our mood. It changes how we feel, and it's great for painting. Um, especially with Spotify now, you can find anything you want at the flick of a few buttons. I think it's having a walk first. I've got a dog here, and um, love my morning walks with him, and that helps to give me time to think about what I want to do for the day. What I'm planning to do gives me lots of ideas okay so now this has become too even I feel like that's too strong and straight a line so I'm just going to soften that a little bit and then actually I think I'm done and it's almost an hour now just a little bit of shadowy colour in there so I can look at my work and I can find problems that need solving without getting too carried away with what I haven't achieved. So, you know, this is a glass half empty, glass half full conversation that you have with yourself. So, you know, there may be areas that you would do differently another time. There may be um, things that you can fix with a little bit more time on your painting. Um, and there may be areas that you really like in your painting. And I think, especially when you're learning, if you can identify the bits that have worked and the bits that haven't worked in your painting or drawing. Um, give yourself a pat on the back for the bits that have worked and look after that piece of work and, and enjoy it for that, that bit that really has worked. That's given a more varied edge there. So at this point now, I want to have a look at what I've created here and also, I'm kind of checking, as I look at it, I'm checking to see if there's anything that needs changing. I feel like I'm almost there or that I'm there and I can just see what I do is look at the painting and I look for things that catch my eye in the wrong way. So really, I want my eye to travel over this kind of um, almost a mosaic of colour and shape here. Uh, what I don't want is for my eye to get caught by something over here or you know, somewhere else. Um, in an unhelpful way. So I'm going to just step back here and have a look at it. And I've, I've got my suspicions about that shadow there. That's not working. And I'm going to just, those stripes there are a bit strong and I just need to disturb those a bit because I think they're just a bit too linear, possibly, as I think about it. I'll adapt this first and then I'll have another look because I'm not entirely sure about the scarf as it is, but sometimes having some kind of pattern, you know, a repeated shape can be kind of useful. So, you know, I'm keeping an open mind on that. It's too dark. And that bit's quite dark here. But less so as it goes upwards. So the white's going to finish. I'm more for this Alla Prima painting because. If you paint it in one go, you don't get into that kind of cycle of painting something over and over again. You know, if I came back to this tomorrow, the light might be different. The plant will have dried up even more than it is already. And uh, I would end up going round and round in circles. I think it's, this is a small flat brush that I can just dab in. And I'm stroking it downwards in a way that I hope helps to suggest the fall of the fabric. But you can see the more acrylic I put on, the more subtle everything is becoming. Um, I'm just 
just adding more blue. Kind of taking my information from what's in front of me, but I'm also adapting it slightly to suit this painting. Let's try again now, step back and have a look. That's it. I just realised when I took a photograph of this that there was a very bright white spot in the centre of the painting, so I've just made that the same colour as the shadow behind, and now I'm much happier with it. Now it's done. And do remember it is meant to be enjoyable. I hope to see you again. If you've enjoyed this video, please would you click like and subscribe below. And I do hope to see you again. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.